Welcome to the Advisory Science Channel. Living Things and Their Habitats, Year 4. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify and group living things. We'll look at ways to sort living things, vertebrates and invertebrates, classification keys, how to observe invertebrates in their habitats, and finally, the different ways habitats can be affected. Firstly, sorting living things. There are billions of things on Earth. To make sense of them, we can start simply by asking if something is living or non-living. We can decide this using questions about characteristics of living things, such as, does it grow? Can it move? Does it reproduce? Does it need nutrients? Once we know something is alive, we can place it into a group with other living things that have the same characteristics. For example, a plant group or an animal group. Plants can make their own food while animals cannot. And once we know it's a plant, we can ask more questions to find out what type of plant it is. For example, mosses have no roots, ferns have divided leaves called fronds, and conifers have seeds that grow inside cone-shaped structures. And if we decide something is an animal, we can ask questions to find out what type of animal it is. One way to do this is to group them into vertebrates, animals with a backbone, or invertebrates, animals without a backbone. Let's look at vertebrates first of all. These include fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Fish are cold-blooded animals that live in water and breathe through their gills. Did you know the fish have wet scales and lay soft eggs outside their bodies. Now, let's move on to amphibians. Amphibians are special because the young live in water and adults live on land. Young amphibians use gills to breathe oxygen, but adults use lungs to breathe oxygen. The adults still need to stay near water or keep their skin moist with a sticky liquid called mucus. Next up, reptiles. Reptiles are land vertebrates that have lungs and dry scales. Most reptiles lay dry, soft eggs. They're cold-blooded like fish and amphibians. Birds are warm-blooded animals with wings for flight, legs and a beak. They lay dry, hard eggs. Finally, let's talk about mammals. All mammals breathe air through their lungs even if they live in water. Did you know that whales and dolphins can hold their breath for a long time because they can store oxygen in their bodies? And most mammals are covered in hair or fur and give birth to live babies. Invertebrates. Now let's look at invertebrates, animals without backbones. Invertebrates come in all colours, shapes and sizes and can be found both inside and outside our homes. Let's dive into the five main types of invertebrates. We'll be discussing slugs and snails, earthworms, insects, and spiders. Slugs and snails look similar and have flat bodies with a foot to help them move. Long tentacles with eyes and a slimy mucus that helps them stick to surfaces. Snails have a large shell on their back while slugs can hide in small gaps. Earthworms are important animals because they help soil by mixing it up, creating pockets of air, releasing nutrients into the soil and providing food for many animals. Insects make up 80% of all animals on Earth. They have common characteristics such as a head, thorax, abdomen, antennae, six legs, wings and compound eyes. Bees are a type of insect. They live in large groups and play important roles in pollinating plants. They spread seeds and produce honey and wax. Not to be confused with spiders. These are invertebrates with two body parts, eight legs and no compound eyes, wings or antennae. They can produce silk and use it to spin webs and make cocoons for their eggs. Some spiders are poisonous, but most are not harmful to humans and have benefits such as eating pests and being used for medicine. Now that you've learned about invertebrates, I hope you understand the importance of these animals in our world. Classification keys. 
Sometimes it's easy to know what an animal is just by looking at it. But sometimes we come across animals that we can't easily identify or name. That's where classification keys come in handy. We use them to identify a plant or animal using yes or no questions about the features of living things. A simple type of classification key is shown in a table format. Here's a classification key for identifying different invertebrates. We can ask if it has a shell or legs, for example. With each answer, we either move on to another question or identify the animal or plant. A branch classification key can also be used. In this example, we're identifying different types of plants. It's important to get lots of practice using and creating your own classification keys. Observing invertebrates. We can look at invertebrates in their natural habitat. Habitats are the place where animals and plants live. They like dark, damp areas like under large stones and damp logs. One way to observe invertebrates is by using tree beating. You gently hit a tree with a stick, causing the insects and other invertebrates to fall onto a white sheet or tray placed below the tree. You can then use a magnifying glass to observe the invertebrates closely and identify them. Another way to observe invertebrates is by using a sweep net. This is a net with a long handle that you can use to sweep through long grass or ponds where insects and other invertebrates may live. You can then carefully examine the contents of the net to identify and observe the invertebrates. A pooter is another tool that you can use to observe invertebrates. This is a small clear container with two tubes attached to it. One tube goes in your mouth and the other is placed near the invertebrate you want to observe. You can then suck gently on the tube with your mouth, which will suck the invertebrate into the container. This allows you to observe the invertebrate up close without harming it. Finally, we can use a simple pitfall trap to catch invertebrates that live on the ground. You put a small container into a hole in the ground. You then cover the top of the container with a lid or a piece of cardboard, leaving a small gap for the invertebrates to fall in. Then you can observe and identify them. Remember, when observing invertebrates, it's important to treat them with care. You should always put them back where you found them and not disturb their habitats. Affecting habitats. Habitats are the place where animals and plants live. They can be changed both by natural processes and human activities. For example, the UK is a country with four seasons. During winter, the weather is cool and wet, and in summer, it's warm and dry. The weather can affect living things in a number of ways. Plants provide food and shelter for insects, who in turn pollinate the plants and become food for other animals in the food chain. In autumn, fruits and vegetables ripen, and animals like mice and squirrels gather food to store for the winter. But, as winter arrives, there's less food available, so animals have to find other things to eat or go into hibernation to save energy. And with the arrival of spring, there's more food and warmer temperatures, leading to new growth and the birth of many animals. Habitats can also be affected by human activity. Cutting down trees and clearing rainforests destroy the amount of shelter and food available for plants and animals. And with the massive amount of litter, experts predict that by 2050, there will be more litter than fish in the oceans. But we can make a difference by replanting trees, clearing up litter and using nature reserves. We can reduce the damage we've caused to plant and animal habitats. We can all take action today. Reduce, reuse and recycle plastics and other materials and make sure that litter is not left on the ground or in lakes and rivers. I hope you enjoyed learning about the different animal groups and the impact of humans on plant and animal habitats. Thanks for watching. For more science resources, visit our website, advisoryscience.com, and check out the blog for even more educational content. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest episodes.